When I was 20, I used to think the world was a meritocracy. Work hard, be a good person, and life would reward you in kind. But as I got older, I realized the truth was far more complex, and at times, harsh. Life doesn't play by fair rules, and the sooner you accept this, the freer you become. Life's inherent unfairness is one of the hardest pills to swallow, but once you do, it becomes one of your greatest strengths. Stoicism offers a profound perspective on this. It teaches that while you can't control the hand you're dealt, you can always control how you play it. This mindset liberates you from bitterness and empowers you to focus on what truly matters, your actions, your growth, and your ability to adapt. Now, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, make sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. Only 15% of my audience is currently subscribed. So if these insights resonate with you, I'd love for you to join our community and turn on the notification bell to stay updated. The world doesn't owe you anything. It's a sobering thought, isn't it? The world doesn't owe you success, happiness or recognition, no matter how deserving you think you are. This truth can feel unfair. After all, isn't hard work supposed to pay off? But here's the thing. Life operates on its own rules, and they don't always align with your expectations. Think about it. There are countless stories of talented people who never received their due recognition. Meanwhile, others seem to coast through life with luck and privilege. If you measure your worth or happiness by external rewards, you'll find yourself trapped in a cycle of frustration and disappointment. The Stoic Perspective on Unfairness The Stoics didn't waste time lamenting the injustices of life. Instead, they focused on what they could control, their thoughts, actions and virtues. Epictetus famously said, It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This isn't a call to accept injustice passively. It's a call to focus your energy where it counts. Here's an example. Imagine you're overlooked for a promotion at work. You could stew in resentment, blaming office politics or favoritism. Or you could use the experience to reflect on how you can improve, strengthen your skills and find opportunities elsewhere. The choice is always yours and it defines your character. Letting go of the fairness mindset. Letting go of the belief that life should be fair isn't about becoming cynical, it's about becoming realistic. When you stop expecting fairness, you free yourself from unnecessary suffering. You begin to approach challenges with resilience and adaptability rather than bitterness. Think of it this way. A sailor who expects calm seas will panic at the first sign of a storm. But a sailor who understands the unpredictability of the ocean is prepared for anything. They don't waste energy cursing the waves. They focus on navigating them. How to navigate life's unfairness. So how do you navigate a world that often feels arbitrary or unjust? The first step is shifting your focus from what you can't control to what you can. Here are a few actionable steps to help you embrace this mindset. 1. Focus on effort, not outcomes. Stop measuring your success by external results alone. Instead, take pride in the effort you put in. Did you give your best? Did you act in alignment with your values? These are the metrics that matter. 2. Reframe setbacks as opportunities. When life doesn't go your way, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Every failure holds a lesson and every setback is an opportunity to grow. 3. Practice gratitude for what you have. It's easy to dwell on what's missing in your life, but Stoicism teaches us to appreciate what we already have. Gratitude shifts your perspective from scarcity to abundance. When I was 20, I remember applying for an internship I desperately wanted. I poured my heart into the application only to be rejected without even an interview. 
At the time, it felt devastating. I questioned my worth and resented the process. But looking back, that rejection was a turning point. It forced me to look elsewhere, leading me to an opportunity I never would have considered otherwise. An opportunity that shaped my career in ways I couldn't have imagined. The truth is, life's unfairness often hides opportunities in disguise. When you stop fixating on what's unfair and start focusing on what's possible, you open yourself to growth and discovery. Why this truth matters. Accepting life's unfairness isn't about giving up. It's about taking back control. When you let go of the idea that life owes you something, you stop being a victim of circumstance. Instead, you become an active participant in your own story. You learn to navigate the storms of life with resilience, grace, and purpose. Remember, the world isn't fair, but that doesn't mean it's hopeless. It means you have the power to shape your own path, no matter what obstacles you face. And that's a truth worth embracing. One of the greatest illusions we carry, especially when we're young, is the belief that people are constantly watching, judging or scrutinizing our every move. The truth? Most people are too busy worrying about themselves to spend much time thinking about you. It's a harsh truth, but also a liberating one. But the weight of perception. At 20, I remember being consumed by the fear of making mistakes in public fumbling a presentation, saying something awkward in a group setting, or even just wearing the wrong outfit. I spent hours analyzing how others might perceive me, replaying moments over and over in my mind. What I didn't realize was that most of the people I worried about had already forgotten the incident or never noticed it in the first place. This isn't a criticism of people's attention spans, it's simply a reflection of human nature. Most of us are caught up in our own lives, juggling responsibilities, insecurities, and dreams. When you understand this, you stop giving undue weight to other people's opinions. Why we overestimate judgment? Psychologists call this the spotlight effect. The tendency to believe we're being noticed and evaluated far more than we actually are. This cognitive bias is deeply rooted in our survival instincts. In early human history, being ostracized by your tribe could mean death, so staying hyper-aware of social cues was a matter of survival. But in the modern world, this hyper-awareness often leads to unnecessary stress. You might feel like every mistake is magnified, every awkward moment etched into the memories of those around you. In reality, most people are too preoccupied with their own worries to fixate on yours. The Stoic Perspective on Judgment The Stoics understood this truth centuries ago. Marcus Aurelius wrote, It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinions than our own. This paradox reflects how much energy we waste on perceptions that ultimately don't matter. Stoicism teaches that the opinions of others are outside our control. You can't dictate how someone feels about you, nor should you try. What you can control is your own self-respect and the integrity of your actions. When you stop seeking external validation, you free yourself from the invisible chains of judgment. Liberation through self-focus. Here's the liberating part. Realizing that most people are focused on themselves means you can let go of the fear of judgment. It allows you to take risks, pursue your passions, and make mistakes without the crippling weight of what will they think. For example, let's say you've always wanted to start a podcast but worry about how your friends will react. Maybe you're afraid they'll think it's silly or that you'll fail. But when you recognize that their attention is fleeting at best, you can move forward without hesitation. The truth is, your fear of their opinions often outweighs their actual interest. 
How to let go of the fear of judgment. Letting go of the fear of judgment is a process, but it's one that pays immense dividends in confidence and freedom. Here's how to start. 1. Shift your perspective. The next time you feel self-conscious, ask yourself, if I saw someone else in my situation, how much would I actually care? Chances are you'd hardly notice. Apply that same perspective to yourself. 2. Reframe mistakes. Instead of viewing mistakes as failures, see them as learning experiences. People rarely remember the details of your missteps. They remember how you handle them. 3. Embrace small risks. Build your confidence by taking small steps outside your comfort zone. Wear that bold outfit, speak up in a meeting, or try a new hobby. Over time, you'll realize that the world doesn't end when you step into the spotlight. A personal reflection. When I was 23, I had an opportunity to give a speech at a community event. I was terrified, not because I didn't know the material, but because I feared looking foolish in front of the audience. I stumbled through the first few minutes, my voice shaky and my palms sweaty. But then something incredible happened. No one seemed to care about my nerves. They were focused on the content, not my imperfections. That experience taught me an invaluable lesson. People care far less about your flaws than you think. How to grow from failure. So how do you turn failure into growth? Here are some practical steps. 1. Detach emotionally. It's normal to feel upset after failing, but don't let your emotions cloud your judgment. Take a step back and view the situation objectively. Ask yourself, what went wrong and what can I learn from this? 2. Seek feedback. Don't be afraid to ask others for their perspective. Whether it's a mentor, friend or colleague, outside feedback can help you see blind spots and identify areas for improvement. 3. Adjust your approach. Use what you've learned to refine your strategy. Maybe you need to develop new skills, change your mindset, or try a different path. Growth isn't about doing the same thing over and over. It's about evolving. 4. Celebrate progress. Even if you're not where you want to be, recognize the progress you've made. Every small step forward is a victory. A personal reflection. When I was 25, I started a business that I believed in with every fiber of my being. I poured my savings into it, worked tirelessly, and was convinced it would succeed. But after two years, I had to close it down. The loss felt devastating, not just financially, but emotionally. I questioned my abilities and my worth, but after some time, I began to see the lessons hidden in that failure. I learned how to manage finances better, how to adapt to market demands, and how to separate my identity from my work. That failure became the foundation for my later successes. It wasn't the end of my story. It was the chapter that taught me resilience. Why this truth matters failure is inevitable, but growth is optional. When you choose to grow, you transform setbacks into stepping stones. You build resilience, gain wisdom, and develop the courage to keep moving forward. This truth isn't meant to sugarcoat failure. It's meant to empower you. Because no matter how many times you fall, you always have the choice to rise. Remember, every failure is an opportunity to write a new chapter in your story. The question is, what kind of story will you tell? Now some exciting news. Our channel now offers a live stream, streaming stoic wisdom and insights around the clock. Plus, by joining our members club, you'll unlock exclusive benefits, deeper content dives, and personal insights. Join us on this journey, and let's build a meaningful life together. And I also humbly ask you to leave a comment, as it helps my channel immensely. If you do not know what to comment, just write better every day, 
so I know you reached this far. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Also, I've linked some books on Stoicism that helped me become the man I am today and will also help you achieve a Stoic mindset. Think back to the last time you made a decision you regret. Maybe you said something hurtful in anger, made a rash choice out of fear, or missed an opportunity because of doubt. If you're like most people, emotions likely played a major role. Here's a harsh truth. Your emotions, left unchecked, can be your biggest enemy. But with self-awareness and discipline, they can also become your greatest ally. Life is full of moments that test your emotional stability, and while emotions are a natural part of being human, they can cloud your judgment, drive impulsive behavior, and create unnecessary chaos if you let them. This is why mastering your emotions is a cornerstone of both Stoic philosophy and personal growth. The Double-Edged Sword of Emotions Emotions are neither inherently good nor bad, they're signals. Anger might point to an injustice, fear to a potential threat, and joy to something meaningful. The problem arises when emotions control us rather than the other way around. Imagine a captain steering a ship through a storm. The waves, emotions, are strong, unpredictable, and potentially dangerous. But if the captain panics and lets the waves dictate the ship's direction, disaster is inevitable. On the other hand, if the captain stays calm, reads the conditions, and adjusts course, they can navigate safely. Your emotions are like those waves. They're powerful, but they're not in charge. You are. Why emotions can betray you. Uncontrolled emotions often lead to poor decisions because they prioritize short-term gratification or relief over long-term outcomes. Think about it. Anger. How many relationships have been damaged by words spoken in the heat of the moment? Fear. How many opportunities have been missed because the risk felt too intimidating? Excitement. How often do people make impulsive purchases or commitments they later regret because they got caught up in the moment. The Stoics believed that emotions, while natural, must be tempered by reason. Marcus Aurelius wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. In other words, you can't control the triggers of your emotions, but you can control your response to them. Emotional Mastery through Stoicism. Stoicism offers practical tools for mastering your emotions. It doesn't suggest suppressing or ignoring them. That only leads to resentment and burnout. Instead, it encourages understanding and regulating emotions through self-awareness and deliberate action. Here's how the Stoics approached emotional mastery. 1. Pause before reacting. When emotions surge, the first step is to pause. This creates space between the trigger and your response. The Stoics called this process prohoresis, or the ability to choose how you respond to external events. 2. Examine your emotions. Ask yourself, what am I feeling and why? Is my anger justified or am I overreacting? Is my fear rational or is it based on assumptions? By analyzing your emotions, you take back control. 3. Focus on what you can control. Many emotional reactions stem from trying to control things outside our power. The Stoics remind us to focus on what's within our sphere of influence, our thoughts, actions, and attitudes. The common emotional pitfalls. While emotions are universal, certain patterns of emotional behavior can be particularly destructive. Recognizing these pitfalls is the first step toward avoiding them. Rash decisions, acting on impulse, whether it's quitting a job in anger or sending a heated message, often leads to regret. Emotional overload, letting stress or anxiety build without addressing it, can lead to burnout or emotional outbursts. Chronic negativity, 
Dwelling on negative emotions like resentment or envy erodes your mental and emotional health over time. Practical Strategies for Emotional Mastery Mastering your emotions is a lifelong journey, but it starts with small, intentional steps. Here are some strategies to help you stay in control. 1. Practice Mindfulness Mindfulness trains you to observe your emotions without being swept away by them. Spend a few minutes each day focusing on your breath or sensations, bringing your mind back to the present moment. 2. Reframe emotional triggers. Instead of seeing challenges as threats, view them as opportunities to grow. For example, if someone criticizes you, see it as a chance to improve rather than an attack. 3. Journal your emotions. Writing down your thoughts and feelings helps you process them objectively. It also creates a record you can revisit to identify patterns and progress. 4. Develop emotional agility. Emotional agility is the ability to move through emotions without getting stuck in them. If you feel anger, acknowledge it, express it constructively, and let it go. The benefits of emotional mastery. When you learn to manage your emotions, the benefits extend far beyond your personal well-being. It improves your relationships, enhances your decision-making, and builds your resilience in the face of adversity. People are naturally drawn to those who remain calm under pressure, making emotional mastery a key trait for leadership and influence. But perhaps the greatest benefit is inner peace. When you're no longer at the mercy of your emotions, you gain a sense of freedom and stability that nothing external can shake. There was a time in my early 20s when I let my emotions run the show. I vividly remember an argument with a close friend that escalated because I let my anger get the better of me. I said things I didn't mean, and while the friendship eventually healed, it was a hard lesson in the cost of unchecked emotions. That experience pushed me to take a closer look at my emotional triggers and reactions. Over time, I learned to pause, reflect, and respond with intention. It wasn't easy, and I still have moments where I slip up, but the progress I've made has transformed my relationships and my outlook on life. Why this truth matters. Your emotions can either serve you or sabotage you. The choice lies in how you manage them. By cultivating emotional mastery, you gain control over your reactions, your decisions, and ultimately, your destiny. This doesn't mean you won't feel anger, fear, or sadness. They're part of being human. But it does mean you'll respond to those emotions in ways that align with your values and goals. Remember, the storms of life will come. But when you learn to captain your ship, you can navigate them with confidence and grace. So here we are at the end of this journey. Eight harsh truths about the world I wish I had known when I was 20. These truths aren't just lessons, they're tools. Tools to help you navigate the unpredictable waters of life with resilience, purpose and clarity. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've covered. First, we learned that life is unfair, but that's okay. Once you stop expecting fairness, you free yourself to focus on what you can control and grow from every challenge. Then we uncovered that most people are too focused on themselves to notice your mistakes. This realization is liberating. It allows you to take risks and live authentically without fear of judgment. Next, we tackled failure, understanding that while it's inevitable, growth is always a choice. Failure is not the end, it's the beginning of transformation if you're willing to learn from it. Finally, we explored how unchecked emotions can be your biggest enemy, but with self-awareness and discipline, they can also be your greatest ally. These truths might be harsh, but they're not meant to discourage you. In fact, 
They're here to empower you. Each truth strips away illusions and helps you see the world for what it is. A dynamic, unpredictable place where your mindset and actions make all the difference. Stoicism isn't about suppressing your humanity. It's about embracing it, embracing life's challenges, failures and imperfections while staying true to your values and purpose. It's a philosophy that teaches us to thrive, not despite life's difficulties, but because of them. Why does it matter to accept these truths? Because they shift the focus from what you can't control to what you can. They allow you to step into your power, make intentional choices, and live with greater peace and fulfillment. They remind you that while the world may be chaotic, you always have the ability to choose your response, and that choice is where your strength lies. Now, the question is, what will you do with this knowledge? Will you let it sit as interesting ideas, or will you take action? Will you start reframing failure, letting go of unnecessary worries, and mastering your emotions? The choice is yours, and the benefits are immense. If you've found value in these truths, take a moment to share which one resonated with you the most in the comments below. And if you know someone who could benefit from hearing this message, share this video with them. Let's spread the wisdom and empower more people to face life with courage and clarity. Life is tough, but you are tougher. Embrace these truths, not as burdens, but as the keys to living a more intentional and meaningful life. Remember, you can't control the waves, but you can always steer your ship. And that, my friend, is where true freedom lies. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Until next time, stay strong, stay resilient, and keep growing. Now, if any part of this message has been helpful to you, leave us your like and comment, helping the algorithm recommend it to someone who needs it at this time. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. And if you look through the videos we've already uploaded, you're sure to find something to take with you. Have a good day.